these cards haven't quite cut it for us lately. These are underperformers. I'm Mia, and I love buying special art for my deck. I'm BZ, and I hate when I tap out for a creature just to have it die. And we're the Nitpicking Nerds, and if you want to support us, guess what? There's a way to do it. It's Patreon.com, and you go to the description, and you click whichever tier is your favorite, and you register for it, and then you're going to directly support the channel. But guess what? You get cool stuff in response, and you get videos that you can't watch anywhere else. Speaking of cool stuff, we're also sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. Whoa! <laughs> if you use our code NERDS at checkout, you can save 5% on anything that you order from Cool Stuff Inc. And we're sponsored by Dragon Shield. They got the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. I don't know if that's their slogan yet, but we've been doing it for years, so I don't see how they haven't picked it up. But if you want, you can go to the links we have in the description, buy the sleeves straight from the source, and support the channel while supporting yourself for no extra money. EU and US. We're also sponsored by Moxfield.com. There's going to be an ad somewhere in the video for Moxfield, and you can't guess where it is. If you say you did and you got it right, you're lying. Also, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday's today and your pets. Yep, this is a very simple video. This is underperformers, cards that we've played with personally or have seen that as far as our initial expectation of the card went, they definitely underperformed. They did not meet that expectation. And let's just start with the first one. This is Blood for the Blood God. It's eight black, black, red. And it costs one less for each creature that died this turn. It's an instant. You can discard your hand, draw eight, and deal eight to each opponent, and then exile it. I was, like, so hyped for this card. I thought it was the best card from Warhammer. And it turns out I can't, you, like, you can't really just put this card in any deck. I tried it in Edgar. You know, you're making a lot of tokens. You'd say, oh, get killing eight creatures with a board wipe when someone tries to wipe my board, that'll be easy. But it's actually a lot harder than I'd really think. It's like sometimes you, like keeping up that black, black, and red isn't always the right deal because it's like sometimes people might exile with a farewell or something. And it just never seems to be right for when I want to play it. I know. It looks so good and it just never is quite that good. Sometimes you're you're like stuck with it and it's like one of your last cards in hand and it costs like seven and you're just like, how am I going to get this to a castable uh, uh, area? And, like, I think you just need, like, a red-black sack deck. Sadly, I've played in a deck with a bunch of board wipes, Blasphemous Act, Toxic Deluge, Vanquish the Horde. That makes sense, but I just still cannot get it to work. Yeah, I've definitely had it dead in my hand a lot, and I've actually cast it for its full cost because it's like, I just, I just need more cards at this point. Might as well. Yeah, good, but not in as many decks as we thought. Next is Cutting Rhetoric, an enchantment for two and a black that says, whenever an opponent attacks you or a planeswalker you control, you can exile the top of their library. You can play it for as long as it's exiled and spend any color of mana to cast it. I really don't like this card. I've seen other people play it, like my friends, and it never stops me from attacking them. And I also never see them hit anything particularly great. Yeah, drawing a card is one thing when you get attacked. There is a card like this, by the way, and I don't think anyone really plays it. So I think what is appealing about this is that it steals a card. But I would much rather draw a card off of my deck than my opponent's deck. My deck always synergizes with my own deck. Opponents can have any number of bricks. So this is like worse than draw a card. I'm really not... I have never seen this card be fantastic. It's deterred a couple attacks, I think, and then just kind of people go, all right, attack for six. Like, here's a land. Even if it hits a land, it just feels like a complete brick. I don't like this card. It has not been played good. I thought it would be closer to Ghostly Prison, where, like, it is a a detriment or a deterrent sometimes. Nah, it seems worse than that. Yeah, I think it's because it's not each creature, so you're not getting, like, ten cards off of it. Yeah. I think you just get one, and it's just not the greatest, and I've definitely hit duds off of it. Every once in a while, you'll get the nice, like, sword supply shares or something, but I've gotten a lot of nothing off of it or just mana dorks, and it just doesn't feel good. Super underwhelming. Let's go to Platoon Dispenser. This is one I played a lot. I thought it was pretty good, but it's not because it's on this list. It's five mana for a 4-6. At the beginning of your end step, if you have two dudes, you draw a card and it unearths for two white-white, and you can pay four mana to make a 1-1. One, one. That might as well not be on the card. I was looking, I was like, oh, white card draw. This seems pretty cool. I'm always going to have two creatures, and that is true. But I do not always want to pay five mana for a 4-6 and draw one card and essentially, like, become the monarch. This kind of was just too slow. I I think white card draw, this is a testament to how far white card draw has come, where I play this card and I go, I am not impressed. I feel like this card really reads a lot better than it performs because I think I've seen this maybe once out of you and it's just just not that great. Well, you won't see it again. The Unearth feels like upside too, and it is, but paying four to draw a card is essentially what it is later in the game. Boy, Platoon Dispenser, I'm sorry. I had high hopes. I just did not meet them. 
Next is Faldorn, Dread Wolf Herald. He for one green and a red, you get a three three that says you get a two two wolf a time you cast a spell from exile or a land enters from exile. If you pay one and tap him and discard a card, you can exile the top of your library and you can play it this turn. I have not seen this do much work in your Cascade deck. Is that where you're taking it from? Yep, that's where I played it. And Faldorn slaps as a commander. Not talking about that. I think I'm just talking about it in the 99. For some reason, when you just take this card out of the command zone and put it in the 99, it just feels so bad. I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but every single time I've drawn this card, I go, this is garbage. I can't do anything with this. I've seen it do so much work as the commander, so that's really, really surprising. But I could definitely see how, like, in your Cascade deck, it could be a really big target. Like, I'm just taking it out because I never have time. <laughs> that's really crazy. I mean, especially since you can discard a card and exile the top. I mean, Yeah, I don't even do good. that. It's crazy. I, I, don't, I don't know what I missed, but this card has only played terrible for me. And this next one might surprise a few people. It's Jingataxius Progress Tyrant. Five blue blue for a five five. Uh, I want to abridge this. You copy your first artifact into your sorcery, and then the opponents collectively counters their first one each turn. So if somebody plays an artifact, boom, gets countered. But then anyone else can play an artifact into their sorcery, and it won't get countered. So this card kind of looks like it unfun, like stacks piece, like dominate the board. But I have seen this in play at least a dozen times now and it has never felt like this force that dominates the game it almost feels like it draws more hate than it's worth like every time yeah i feel like you become the target instantly and with your opponents kind of colluding it never really seems that tough to kill i've seen people just throw away a ramp spell and then someone comes in with a path to exile or something and it just never sticks as long as you would really think yeah it's like the worst combination of everything because seven mana all right cool and then your opponent's mostly just aren't going to, like, if they're they're not going to just run out spells into this and then go, oops, pass, they're going to go, okay, I'll play creatures and get around it or or uh, throw a cheap spell down and then play the spell I really want to resolve. But what happens is it kind of just like, okay, it deters them a little bit, they play creatures instead, they still spend their mana, you untap, boom, play an artifact, clone it, you're not even up mana after all this stuff. It doesn't not, it doesn't translate very well to me. And I've seen way too many times where people go, oh, shoot, I really want this gone. I'll basically discard a card and then you swords it and everyone teams up and it just goes away. And then I'm left there thinking, it wasn't even that good. Yeah, I think the copy effect takes way too long because it's seven mana just to like get around the table. You probably won't be casting another spell after this, or if you do, it's like maybe one cheap one. So it doesn't it's you're not really up mana at a certain point. And then Every single time, the table teams up. I've never seen someone go like, oh, I don't want that gone, besides the person playing it. So I think that it just makes you, like, arch enemy at that point. It's kind of like Shieldred, the original one, where it's like, it doesn't do that much, but then people still hate it and they want to go after it. It's definitely a target for removal. Yeah, what do we got next? Next is Black Market. Three black black. It says when a creature dies, you put a charge counter on it. At the start of your main phase, one. Add a black mana for each charge counter on it. This is seen in so many pre-cons. I've had this in my first pre-con and it's not that good. It's like the slowest card of all time. It takes five creatures to get your mana back and it just to pay for it and it's only main phase one so it doesn't carry over and i just never really seem to like this i just would rather be doing a lot more with my five mana yeah whenever i see this it feels like my opponent took a mulligan it just kind of sits there and then even if you get to the point where you're generating like six mana off this you're up a couple mana and you really need to untap again with it and generate like six more and then you're like whoa i really did it i got like a super mega ritual Black Market, not impressive. I think maybe you could just play like Revel and Riches instead. It still get it gets you the mana right away, so you don't have to wait. And it sticks around if you need it for other phases. And then also, if you kill enough creatures, you just win. So I feel like that card kind of like mega replaced this thing. Plus, it's more than just black mana. It's one mana of any color with the treasures. There's like seven upsides. I guess Black Market out, Revel and Riches in. And let's go to Wire Surgeons. This is a card I play with a lot, and I... Couldn't get it to work. It's four black black for a six five with fear. Each artifact creature in your graveyard has encore, and the encore cost is equal to its mana cost, which means if I have a two mana two two artifact, I can pay two, exile it. I get three copies, each going at a different opponent, and then I get sacrifice at the end of the turn. I felt like I would want this with all the artifact triggers and like entering the battlefield, I can sacrifice them. But I, I must have missed something on this. I think the fact that you don't cast them, they just enter hurt it a little bit. I had some cast triggers I wanted to mess around with. It's a really expensive price to pay up front, and you only get a 6-5 fear, so it's kind of like an enchantment that dies easily. 
I need, kind of need to untap with it. I have not been able to get value out of the wire surgeons. I mean, how much like little dirtly cheap artifacts do you have? Because I felt some of yours were like threes and fours. That's where really where the bulk of it was lying. Yeah, and then even if they're like cheap dirtlies, I don't want to encore them that much. Yeah, you think that with the sliver grave mother coming in, there'd be a lot more hype for encore, and this would like be really good. But like, don't try it just because one encore thing is good, right? <laughs> Not all encore is created equal. This is very replaceable. Also, six drops in your black artifact based decks. There's a lot of options. Marionette Master is one of them. Go check. There's like a thousand things to do, especially if you're playing blue. So wire surgeons just never gonna make it. I'm sorry. I tried. I really did. Next is Cryptic Pursuit. For two blue and a red, when you cast an instant or sorcery from your hand, you can manifest the top card of your library. When the face down creature dies, exile it if it's an instant or sorcery, and you can cast it until the end of your next turn. I really don't like manifest in general because I, I never really seem to hit, like everything I want is usually stuck under it, and then I just have this two-two and I'm like, huh. Wish I could do that. And well, then, with this, all you need to do is have the creature die, and you get the, your card back to your hand if it's an instant or sorcery. I mean, yeah, but then people know, and they're just like, oh, I'll take two to not let you get that. And it's like, cool. It's Well, they don't know when it's face down, but they'll know when it dies. No, no, what I'm saying is, like, people, like, see you put, put them all manifest down. It's like, okay, I can take two to, like, not let them get that regardless. Of right. It's probably an instant or sorcery I won't block or something. Yeah. I thought this card was good. I tried it out in a budget deck. It seems like a really good version of like Mystic, uh, Murmuring Mystic, and it makes dudes, and then you can kind of draw cards when they die, so it just seems like the this ultimate package, but I think the four mana do nothing enchantment is what really kind of stopped me. I found myself, maybe the deck I'm playing is more aggressive, but I found myself never with a window to cast this. It felt like I had to take an entire turn off, and then in the late game, it felt like small potatoes, because if there's eight mana, it's like, okay, I don't know. It's, it's all right. There's a lot of things that would be good in this point. So Cryptic Pursuit feels more like fillery. It blends in with all the other payoffs. It doesn't stand out. Yeah, I feel like in your Balmore deck, I assume. True. You're chaining a bunch of stuff at the end, so I'm not sure if these like little you know creatures in the beginning would really work because you're trying to chain them all at the very, very end. You know. Sometimes that deck does just sit there and then end to turn and play a bunch of things. This doesn't keep you stable in the early game it just kind of yeah i don't want to play this on turn four that's for sure let's put it that way one card that i thought would be a lot better was wand of wonder it's a three red artifact and if you pay four and tap it you can have each opponent exile until they hit an instant or sorcery from the top of their library and you can cast x spells without paying their mana cost where one through nine like you roll d20 one through nine x is one ten through 19 x is two and if you roll 20 you can cast all of them i have hit so many duds from this. I've seen so many people hit so many duds. You know, the person who's playing like Boros and hits, you know, like a nature's lore or something. Or a counter spell off the top. Or a board wipe when you don't want it. Yeah. It just is really, really rough and it reads like it's really fun and I might put this in a fun deck or just a random, like, let's see what we get deck. But I think if you're trying to play for power, this is not the way to go. Yes, I will reiterate, this is a super fun card. I love it. I I love this card. It's super fun, but it really did underperform in the power category. I still would recommend playing this card. It's very enjoyable. It just isn't as strong as I thought it would be. And it's not even like I thought it would be that strong, but it's pretty clunky. I think the four mana investment to put it down and then also format to use it yeah. really makes it rough because if you put this down turn four, you're like, oh, am I just holding up four mana? Yeah, it's like, I, I want to cast spells. I don't want my whole game to suddenly become spinning wand of wonder. It's It can be tricky. All right, let's go to Norn's Wellspring. More white card draw. This is one and a white for an artifact. When a creature you control dies, you scry one, you put an oil counter on it, and you can pay one and tap and remove two oil counters from it to draw a card. I think... I looked at this and I was like, I got sacrifice stuff. I got little dudes. I'm going to proliferate. I'm go I got everything. This is going to be easy. And I hate it. <laughs> I just can't get this to work. I think the thing that doesn't look obvious that to me at first is that it removes two oil counters to draw, not one. So you can't just sack a dude and then draw a card. You got to sack two and it adds up in like an unfavorable way to where, all right, I drew one, but I'm still not... I'm still not up on cards. Then I gotta have four dudes die to draw two, and it's like over the course of 
like over multiple turns and it's just a little bit slow. And the fact that it taps and you have to remove two and pay one into it, I feel like that's a lot of like resources and you can only do it once per turn cycle. That just doesn't seem like it really adds up great in the long run. Yeah, it's more white card draw that surprisingly we're turning away this white card draw like, no thank you. We've really I'm evolved. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no thank you. Uh, what I won't turn away, Moxville.com, the best way to build a deck online. Not a poolside deck, a Maybe if you're going to the beach, a poolside deck. You can navigate through the site. It's very easy to use. You can check us out. We actually have an account. You can check out all of our decks. You can sort the decks however you want to view them. A lot of options for you on Maxwell.com. And even better, they have dark mode and light mode. I hate looking at things in light mode, so the dark mode has been so, so great on my eyes. Yeah, if you don't know, you've actually been watching this channel in dark mode the whole time. You don't want to see what light mode looks like. No, it will burn your eyes. It will burn your eyes. This is the merciful uh, mode. Okay, let's go to number 11. These are numbered the whole time, and you didn't even know. Baba La Saga. It's three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Tap it and sacrifice up to three permanents. If three plus card types were sacrificed, you draw three, you gain three, and each opponent loses three life. I've seen BZ try to work this in, like, Commander and, like, Draft, and it never really seems to work. No, this is, again, a good Commander. That deck kind of slaps. It does a lot of stuff. It draws a lot of cards. You untap her and you go, you go ham. But in the 99, even in the Delirium deck, I'm like, this is perfect. I got artifacts, I got enchantments, I got stuff to throw away. And it just felt like I think maybe waiting to untap with it was the hard part. And like that extra building around of her, of her in the command zone really goes a long way. But I couldn't get to work without it, and I think she underperformed. Sorry. I really wanted to see it perform, too. You were really hyped for it. I was so sad when it didn't work out every time. <laughs> Now that Amber's here, we can move on to Voidrend. It is white, blue, and black for an instant that says it can't be countered, and it destroys non a target non-land permanent. I have this in Ramos, and I was trying to do it for the colors because that gets three counters on Ramos, and I figured that when you destroy target permanent, like a generous gift, that's three mana also, so it wouldn't be that bad of a rate. The can't be countered never really seems to apply, and just getting those colors is usually harder than it's worth. I don't want to keep up all of that when I might need like the blue over here. And I just, I never really seem to keep all of that up until late game when I'd rather be just destroying a bunch of things at once. Yeah, I never, I was going to ask you what, what like didn't do it for you with this one. So it's like, it feels different, the generous gift? Yeah, it's, I think the colors really play into it. Like you can't cast it? It's maybe it's not even not, can't cast it, but there's so many different pips in that deck that I'd rather use them for other things than keeping up three specific pips at any given point because I might want to you know have those used elsewhere. That's fair. Yeah, void run kind of hard to cast. Let's go to temples. This is just every temple. You know what? We'll even throw temple of the false god. But what I'm really talking about is like temple of triumph, a red white tap land that there's a battlefield tapped and you scry one. Outside of budget, uh, I think in a budget, they're totally fine. They're great. You'll take whatever you can get, and it's it's a nice, solid little dual land. But in, out of budget, I've, like, cut temples from every single deck over the course of, like, the past couple of years without even knowing. And then I kind of thought to myself, I'm like, do I play temples in anything? Nope. Not even two-color decks. I'd rather just have untapped lands. There's enough duels now. I just don't go to temples. Yeah, outside of budget, I think there are a lot more options because if you're doing multiple color decks, you can go for like triumphs or something. Or if you're going like with the big money for a couple colors, there are like shocks and that sort. But I never seem to use this outside of budget. But in budget, I think these are some of the better ones you can do because it's better than like gaining one life or something. Yeah, you don't want to tap gain one life land. I'll take Scry all day because you're going to play, you know, 12, 13 tap lands in your budget decks. But outside of them, I'm going to recommend it right now. Cut your temples. You won't even miss them. You won't even miss them. Let's go to number 14, which is... Halo Fountain. It's two and a white for an artifact that says if you pay white and tap it and untap a tapped creature you control, you can create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen. There's going to be the word tap a lot. <laughs> There is so much tap. White, white, tap and untap two creatures you control. You can draw a card. And five white, tap the artifact and untap 15 creatures. You just win. And having the like text on a card, you win the game. That Tempting. is so appealing. But I always get to the point in this when I tried it where it was like, oh, maybe a couple white mana and a couple creatures are tapped. You can draw a card. But I always like... Ne 
whenever I do the non-15 creatures one, I never really want to send my creatures at the point where I can use it, you know? Because it's like, I don't want to attack because everyone has bigger creatures that will just eat my creatures, so then I can't get the 15, but then you want to use it to draw a card because you don't want to do nothing with your creatures. It looks, it maybe reads more like sacrifice two creatures draw a card because they're going to be little tiny dummies that you can pump out a lot of, but I don't necessarily want to sacrifice them to draw my cards. Wait, who would have thought? White card draw on an underperformer? This is the third one. I didn't even realize that half this list is white card draw. The token thing really doesn't matter for the most part. And I never get to the 15 because when you're... Well, that's no easy feat. Yeah, but especially even with the 15, like there, you're not going to... It's going to be so much tougher to get those because you have to tap and untap. And it's just like, it's just really rough, I think. Yeah, Halo Fountain really finicky. I think maybe finicky is the right word. Yeah, you know, it's it's good when it's good, but I've had it be so bad so many times, and five white pips is sometimes tough. That could be tricky if you're not mono white. Let's go to Vivian. This is a planeswalker. This is Champion of the Wild. She's two and a green for four loyalty, and you can cast creature spells as though they had flash. Plus one until end of turn, up to one creature you control gains Vigi and Reach. Minus two, look at the top three cards, exile one face down, and on the rest on the bottom, and you can look at it and cast it if it's a creature. So if you whiff... I guess you just have a card exiled and you can look at it. But you really want a creature. This is for creature-dense decks, I'd say at least 35. But even then, this is a non-creature in your creature decks, and all it does is give your creature spells flash, mostly, and then, like, maybe a creature can block better. I've, oof, I've seen Vivian a lot, and I have never once been scared of Vivian. No, you're, this isn't the Planeswalker you're really attacking when you're like, get this off the board right now. I've seen people whiff on the minus two. You can like, just ignore it. Multiple times. And then the flash is never really relevant. I've seen it kill a couple things. It's like, oh, swinging with a 2-2, two -two, ha ha, I got a 3-3 three -three in. But it's, That's what they said. They went, ha ha. <laughs> but it's never been so scary where I just have to get it off the board immediately. Yeah, I think you just kind of, you're like, oh, Vivian, good job. And she's like, did I do good? And you're like... Yeah, <laughs> and everyone just pretending like she's not there. <laughs> Poor Vivian. I would say uh, there's actually some other underperformers videos. They're a lot older. Mia's not even in them. So if you want to check them out, they're right here. And oh, and remember, what's our little quote for the end of the day? Please love Amber. She is the most wonderful daughter.